um, you know, the psychedelic experience is interesting and like, I'd like to like let everyone know, I mean, don't let this, this suit and tie fool you, but like London Real started off really based in the experience, you know, and I was a former banker and I think within five or 10 episodes, I was going on my first ayahuasca experience and I was talking about it on YouTube before and after. And I honestly thought the Bank of England would never allow me back in the financial markets. And there were people in the ayahuasca community, that wasn't a big community because online wasn't that big then, but they were saying, don't do this blah, 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 and mm. it, it was like a big deal at yeah. the time. Yeah. And it's funny, Robin, I also remember my daughter at school saying the word ayahuasca in fifth grade and the nurse calling us and the headmistress calling us. <laughs> it was like a private school in, you know, in, in Belsize Park and bringing us in. Yeah. What is this all about? Right. How and did then, they know what ayahuasca was? <laughs> yeah, it, it, they were really judging us right. and it was yeah. a really difficult situation, mm. you know, well, why is she talking about this? And I guess she just heard it or I don't know. And then I had to make a decision to do our episode on DMT, and I did a before and after DMT episode with Alexander Ward, um, who was a co-host last time we spoke. And yeah. this is before this became really popular on YouTube, where everyone was doing these before and afters. Ended up being our most watched episode of all time, you know, in comparison with some of the most famous people in the world. It was mm -hmm. just me before and after my first DMT experience, oh, and wow. so. There was a real need for it out there. Yeah. And um, these were questions I was asking really early on. And, mm. um, you know, how do, how do you usually explain what you do to a, a stranger on the street? And what is the reaction when you mention psychedelics? And yeah. Well, you use words like magic <laughs> mushrooms and, yeah. you know, things like that. It's a funny question because you, if you're, let's say you're at a party or something, um, uh, I, I'm often a bit reluctant to say because th there are one of two responses still but mostly actually it, it's more in the kind of emphatic interest and they want to know more and more and you realize that you've come to this party to relax and you're sort of back at work and i hate that so uh i i try to um you know to um to avoid avoid it a little bit but um, um what i'll say is that i'm a scientist and then if i decide I'm gonna actually tell them, I'll say I, I study I study drugs and I study psychedelic drugs. And I like to just, you know, put it out there like that. I don't wanna say hallucinogens or psychoactive. I'll, Cause for me, there's a kind of agenda in a way, which is that I really sort of believe in the term psychedelic. Uh, intentionally at some point in, in doing my research, um, I was noticing that people were still referring to these drugs as hallucinogenic and I made a conscious decision that from here on I'm just going to call them psychedelics um, because the term mind manifesting, mind revealing, making the mind visible, um, however you want to translate it, um, is at the crux of why these compounds are interesting and potentially very useful. Um, so I, I put it out there and, and usually they kind of know or they've got some idea what that is, and they'll say, or I'll say, oh, like LSD, magic mushrooms. Um, and you like the term magic mushrooms, even though last time I think I called you on it was like, I don't like using that term because it makes it sound like some kind of a goofy ride. And you were like, no, I like using that term because what? It, it, why do you like using that term? Mostly just because people then know what you're talking right. about. It's the quickest way. It's a little reminder that not everyone knows what psilocybin is. Yeah. Or how to say it, because I'm not sure I'm saying it right still, because the Americans call it uh, psilocybin, and I've always been calling it psilocybin, it's stuck. Um, but you say magic mushrooms and everyone's on the same page, you know. Um, but, I, and I haven't really kind of thought too much about the problem for a scientist to be referring to these things as magic. I just, they're kind of like the nickname, magic mushrooms, you know, because psychologically the experience feels magical. There's no getting around that. Um, I think Richard Dawkins has a book uh, called something like The Magic of Nature. So it's that same kind of use of the term. Right. Yeah, magic. And so then from psychedelics, do most people have strange reactions? Oh, that's that stuff that was banned, the illegal stuff, the stuff the hippies do. Yeah. That, you know, or do they usually say, oh, I've heard about that stuff can be helpful for depression. That probably doesn't happen. Or well, no, it's, it? it's that. Really? Yeah, it's much more that. Yeah. These days. Almost across the board. Interesting. For someone, it, I, I'm a, a little taken aback when actually they're of the former, you know, and they're... And they say, oh, that's, that, that's dangerous, isn't it? Oh, you know, 
It depends on the context, of course. Right. Yeah.